Now lately I've been having a bit of a crisis. As a music producer, I oftentimes want the freshest new drum sample, something that's really gonna spice up my tracks. So I cave and I go to websites like Splice to get some royalty-free drum samples, but I don't really know where any of these drum samples are coming from. Have they been EQ'd? Have they been compressed? I don't know. And then am I EQing and compressing them again, making them distorted and ugly? So I thought to myself, well, I've got drums. I've got microphones. Why don't I create my own drum samples? So that's exactly what I did. And I processed them all in this video. So come on aboard, we'll check it out. So this is the room we're gonna be recording in. As you can see, it has very, very high ceilings, which is great because it's gonna capture the reverb of the drum. So we're gonna get a really, really, really nice room sound in this room. Not just really nice, really, really, really nice. So to start off, I have this classic Ludwig, uh, it's a turquoise sparkle kick drum. And I've got a couple of different mics going into it. I've got a Shure Beta 52. I've got a DW sub kick. And all the way in the back of the room, I have an AKG C414 as my room mic. And all these mics are being ratted to a Focusrite 18i20. So we're going to get rolling with this. So I have my snare drum set up. It's a 90s Ludwig snare. It's brass, so it's extremely resonant. Um, I got it a few months ago. It sounds great. It's got a brand new head on it. Sort of, sort of new. I got it a few months ago, but I haven't played it since. Um, so I have three mics on this. I have two SM57s, one on the bottom, one on the top, and that's going to catch the attack of the snare, the punch. That's really, that's where you're going to feel up the middle of the mix, is that punch. Um, but then to capture the vibe and the overall sound of the snare, I have a AKG C414. That's going to capture just the, the essence of this baby. I really love, there's the, some depth to this room mic. It's like as if you can hear the snare moving through the room. It's got dimension. Yeah, I love it. Ah, it's killing me, I love it. There's, I can just hear the room in, in this right now. Something's happening with like, just putting my fingers on this snare then I have this like holiday napkin on it, but, but putting my fingers on the snare seems to be controlling the sound a little bit. I can hear it like move back in my headphones. Ah, it's amazing. You can also hear motorcycles on the road. You got some nice rim shots. You got some nice really light taps for ballads and, sm and, and uh, quieter songs. Then just sort of like medium hits too. I've never really enjoyed the, the, the bottom mic. I really haven't. I just get rid of it all together or turn it way down so it's not even audible. I'm going to try to put this mic on the side of the snare drum and see what happens. If that sounds cool, we'll start moving the rim mic. Because the rim mic, is, it's getting such a cool sound right now. I have a feeling though, because of these high ceilings, we're going to get a cool sound anywhere in this room. But if you're at home and you're in like a smaller place, just, just find the sweet spot. There's one in the room. I've heard about miking the side of a snare drum. I think people just put them places and see what it sounds like. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm not gonna go look up a tutorial. <laughs> I think something really cool just happened. It sounds gated. Like the, the side mic sounds gated already. There's nothing on this. I like double checked. I was like, is there a reverb? Did I put something on it? Did I put a gate? There's nothing. It's just the way it sounds. This is amazing. I love the sound of this tom. I like the, the overhead a lot. I had it in the back of the room, but I like the overhead sound a lot. So I have this Ludwig uh, 
turquoise sparkle, beautiful drum here. It's a floor tom. I've got the SM57 as my close mic catching the attack and sort of the, the bounce of the drum. And then I've got my AKG C414 in the back of the room picking up the room sound, which is a, it's, it's omnidirectional, so it's picking up everything. And we're gonna get this floor tom sound and we're gonna use it. So here we go. So I like to get different dynamics of the drums. I start off really quiet and then get a medium sound and then a nice loud sound and then some doubles. It's gonna sound robotic when I try and put them together as like two drum hits. So I like to get different dynamics so it's more humanized. So let's listen to them. Okay, so we're here in the studio today, and we're gonna start actually processing these drum samples. Um, and we're gonna start with the snare drum, uh, because I was just generally the most excited about the sound that I got from the snare in that big room. First, I want you to hear all the different room mic recordings so you can hear the difference in color and tone. We're gonna start with a medium overhead uh, room microphone. It was about six feet away from the drum, so it sounds like this. Next, this is the room mic when it's just, it's right over the snare drum, about maybe four feet above it. So this is what that sounds like. Next, I had the room mic six feet above the snare drum. It was acting as an overhead, so it was picking up the sound of the snare drum in the room vertically. So this is what that sounds like. Next, this is the back of the room mic. Um, it's not the far back. This is probably about a little over halfway between me and the back wall. So that's what this sounds like. And finally, this is the far back of the room. This is when I took the room mic, put it all the way up against the, uh, the back wall, and that's what this sounds like. So I made some EQ adjustments on the side mic boosted some highs in uh, at around 8,100 hertz, took out some of the low end that was really unnecessary. And then with the uh, room mic, I just added Logic Studio FET compressor. Um, so let's hear what that sounds like. This is without. With. So I added that compressor to, to give the room mic just a little bit more sustain and a little bit more grit. So for the more fat sounding snare drum, the, the detuned sound, I was going for somewhat of a new wave 80s vibe on that one. So next is that really tight snare drum, the one I tuned up really, really high that I was trying to get sort of a 90s hip hop sound out of. Um, and this is what we got. Uh, let's take a listen. So that is without the napkin on top, so you're getting a lot of those um, overtones and that ringiness of the snare drum. Um, so let's jump to the one with the napkin. We'll listen to the difference. I think this one got a real 90s hip hop sound to it, sort of like a Fresh Prince crack. Um, and uh, I'm really excited to start using it. So finally, the side stick, the rim click. Let's hear how that came out. So just a really, really clean, Rim click sound, very classic. That room mic picked it up beautifully. The close mics did their job really, really well. So like I said, very minimal processing on these to get them to sound good. I just added a little bit, little bit of compression on the room mic and added some minor EQ moves. Um, and I got a really, really sweet sound. So next is that kick drum sound. Um, I got a really, really killer kick drum sound on this session. You know, with some minor EQ moves and some gating, you can get a lot of variation out of just one kick sound. So here is the sound I got. So a really, really solid kick sound. And a lot of the vibe of this kick drum is coming from that room mic. So let's take a listen without it. With. Without. So 
So it's pretty cool how much the room mic can add. So I sent the sub, the close mic, and the room mic all to one auxiliary bus um, just called Kick. And I made basically one EQ move over the whole thing. Um, I took out some of those low, low frequencies, boosted around 60, then did a dip to cut out the woofiness at around 90. And then I just wanted to add some of that real, that kick, that's, that attack and that presence from the batter head. So I just boosted up here um, around 8,900 um, and got a really, really nice sound just from a simple EQ move. Now I wanted more of a hip hop sound out of this kick drum um, and using some EQ and some gating, I was able to get a really, really quick but low-endy sort of kick that you might hear in a hip-hop track. So this is what it sounds like. To get that, I added three things. I used the FabFilter Pro-Q, took, uh, took out a bunch of the mids, again, did a, did, a, did a pretty large boost in the highs to bring out the clickiness of it. Then I added Waves Smack Attack to bring out some of the attack, and um, I took down some of the sustain. Then I took Waves C1 Gate, so it's sustained and low-endy, but then it quickly cuts off. It gives you just a nice, quick, low-endy kick. Here's without. But it's a lot wetter and a lot more punchy. Um, and it also sounds really cool if we bring back in the room mic. Let's hear what that sounds like. So that nice quick hip hop kick with just a little bit of room bled underneath and it sounds really, really cool. You really have a whole lot of control over the sound of your room and the size of your room by just adjusting the fade ins and fade outs on your room mic or any any uh, audio recording. So I've you can as you can see here, I've got a really sort of a quick decay on the fade, um, and this is what it sounds like. But if I move that decay up, bring up the sustain of that fade. Let's see here now. Let's hear with. So it's similar to a reverb where you can adjust the, the size of the room. It's a really, really useful tool, super, super simple. And I was just really happy with that, that level of control that I could have over my room, even after the fact. It was as if I could just adjust the size of the room. Very, very cool. So the floor tom on its own sounds like this. So it's big sort of uh, smack and floor tom, exactly what I was going for. I wanted something that was really going to attack and hit. But with a few EQ adjustments and some gating, I was able to get the floor tom to sound like this. Which is just a really, really cool 808 sound. Uh, very natural from a nice Ludwig floor tom. So to get this sound, um, I made some pretty drastic adjustments on the FabFilter Pro-Q. I took out some of the lows, boosted a little bit at 60 to give it that low end punch. Then I took out most of the mids and all of the highs. Um, you'll see this drastic sort of bell curve right here. I found there was still some attack on the close mic that was giving it sort of that, uh, that smack and that wet sound. So I was able to cut that out completely by doing a pretty drastic bell curve. And here it come back in when I bring it up. So there's that sort of attack sound that I wanted to get rid of, but you can also just minimize it and turn it down to your preference um, using an EQ. So if I turn it down, you can still kind of hear you can still kind of hear that click in there. But if I turn it down all the way, the attack is pretty un inaudible. I did a pretty drastic gate. Instead of the gate, though, I used the expander and type, which, as you can see, it's a more of a rolling curve off, which was great for this 808 instead of something that's really just cut really quick. So let's take a listen to a before and after with this thing on. So 
So it really affects the sustain, this gate. Um, if you listen closely, it's, it's a minor adjustment, but I just wanted it to cut off a little bit sooner. Uh, so the C1 gate allowed me to do that. there you have it that's how I make my own samples I hope that you enjoyed that like I said these samples are gonna be available for you for free in the description below so take them use them have fun with them I would love to hear what you make from them and we'll see you next week take care